So we had a homework assignment, which was to write 30 great things about yourself, or not even great, 30 unique things about yourself, 30 things that were unique about you. Did anyone do that assignment? Ah, no one did the assignment. I, I, I thought about it, but it just seems way too weird. It just seems strange. Uh, Doesn't it? I mean, come on. Down. To think about, <laughs> come on, honey, sit around the table and help think of some great things about me. <laughs> Why not? It would probably know. be healthy to do that. That's right. It is very healthy. Yeah. But as we have to do is the first, the first component here. I'm not going to be able to do it if we don't know who we are. Right. So, but we're going to try anyway. But what we're, ta we're talking about is we're talking about the different mindsets you need in life to be able to maximize yourself, your potential. And the first. The first two are the idea that you have a unique purpose. As I said, people do not believe that. Okay, people think they're just here, but there's a purpose. The purpose is, is that God created the world, and he wants everyone in the world to do what they are, the talents they are given, in order to help make themselves and the world around them better. The method, the means that we get there are the mitzvot. Mitzvot means connectors. Jewish people have 13. The nations of the world have seven. Those are the mitzvot. Those are ways and the additional part, the charity and the acts of kindness, which are applicable to everyone. These are things that if you think about it, you're doing that are specifically because you have a part and a role in bringing the world to where it has to be. So it's perfection. Okay, the second part, the second mindset is that you have a unique mission based on what your talents are. And that was the assignment that well, we didn't do, which was the assignment of writing things about yourself to get to know yourself. Because we all know ourselves, yeah, and you know, I'm the same person I was yesterday, but most of the time you go through life, you don't really focus on what exactly are your strengths. You can do it by your weaknesses, too. As I mentioned before, usually the place of your weaknesses is the place of your strength also. In almost every case, where your greatest challenge is, if you overcome that, that will be where your greatness is, almost in every case. But everyone has skills and everyone has unique tendency. And this is the concept we touched on last time, which is the really the concept of what's called mazel. Mazel, you might have heard this term. People say, you know, good luck, mazel tov. Have you heard that term? There was a, a song a number of years ago that they, I don't know, I forget which band it was. They threw out mazel tov, which means congratulations. But mazel tov literally means good luck. Well, that's a real bizarre thing to say because we don't believe in luck. <laughs> so how can you say good luck? What does it mean, mazel tov? Doesn't make any sense. So the word mazal is from the word nozel, which means to flow. Every single person has a unique set of qualities that is his flow. That's called his mazel his or her mazel, and those are the circumstances of your life. You, why are you born in this generation? Why are you born to these parents? Why are you born looking this way, not that way? Why are you born this intelligence, not that intelligence? Every single thing is you are your tools, the mazel, the flow that you're given to be able to accomplish your mission. But you have a mission, and we have to understand is, is that the mazel that you get it are the tools that you have to accomplish your mission. It doesn't mean, though, that's the main thing. The main thing is not the tools you get. The main thing is how you use them to accomplish your mission. Because the amazing thing is, at every moment, God gives you the tools that you need to accomplish your mission. Now, Sometimes you might want new tools. Let's say you don't may have that much money. You may want to make more money. Okay, that's fine. You may pray to make more, more money. That's okay. That's okay. But right now, if your mind is, well, 
I need to be there, then you are not alive right now. Because right now I'm thinking that uh, uh, where I am is not right. And that's not true. Every single person, where they are at that moment is exactly where they need to be. With the challenges, with the difficulties, with the strengths, whatever it is, because it's nothing to do with the tools you have, rather the decisions you make to use those tools you're given to accomplish your unique mission. The reason why I gave that assignment was because it's gets very hard to understand, well, what does God want from me? Little old me, what, what, is, what, what, what does he want from me? But ladies and gentlemen, to, to do this first part of this assignment, you have to finish the following sentence. I don't know if we'll do it now, maybe we will, maybe we won't, we'll see how we're doing, but we use hypnotherapy, meditation to get you into a state where you could actually finish the sentence. But you want to finish the following sentence. Here it is. My purpose in life is to... My mission in life is to... My unique job in life is to... That's not easy to do. I admit it's nice to do. That's why I told you everyone has everyone has the mitzvot, which are the connections that if they do them, they are doing their purpose. And people do it in different ways. So, for example, uh, um, in the seven Noahide laws, okay, you have a concept of let's say. The idea of, of not eating Aver Menachai, not to eat animals that when they're still alive. This is the fundamental basis of the idea of cruelty. It extends to everything in the world, not just to people, but to everything. I mean, you have to say it in America today because, you know, the, if, if someone harms dogs, that's worse than, I don't know, people, people killing in wars. So that somehow they've had it, they've come up with these crazy. Uh, uh, values of of of, of a, a disproportionate understanding that the greatest kindness is to of human beings, but the the law of not eating animal from a live flesh represents the concept of of understanding the that you cannot be cruel to any creation in the world. Now you're going to have your way to express that. You know, you'll have your way of seeing the world. You'll have your approach. So in the mitzvot themselves, you're going, as you're doing the right thing in your life, you are expressing your way of doing that. That's true. But in addition to that, every person has something that is unique to them. The reason why I say writing the 30 things, because most many things we share, the differences start to come out when you start to see the fine details of what you what how you look. And once you understand that, you start to get to know yourself, then you could hopefully give a first draft of this sentence. You do this in, in if you're opening a company, you have a mission statement. You need a mission statement in life too. What God gave me talents, he gave me skills. That's my mazel. So when somebody gets married, we say mazel tov, doesn't mean good luck. It means that the tools that you're getting right now, that God's giving you in this relationship, should be the best and easiest for you to accomplish your mission. Of course, they are the ideal, because whatever God's giving you it are the tools that you need. But sometimes it can be very difficult. So you can say, I want the tools that will make the job easier for me. But it's, it's really, it really is whatever tools you're getting at that moment are what you need. So I want to see if we could start to do this. Could anyone start to say a, a sentence of my personal mission in life, my unique qualities, my unique mission, my unique job is to what? They don't want to finish a sentence. Who's going to have the guts to try to finish that sentence here live? With 7 billion people watching. 
Repeat. The, I'm not sure we have that the, there, but we'll try. The, repeat the line again. You can say it in any way you're comfortable with, but my my mission, my purpose in life, and that's why you got to think about who you are, is to do this. Now, again, as you're going to say it, you're going to redefine it. You're going to expand it. As you think about it more, you'll get you'll get it into more into more specifics. Usually, I need to do this with hypnotherapy or with meditation to let a person relax and see themselves. But if you start to see yourself and your qualities and where God puts you, where He puts you now, in what situation, in what environment, you have some way that you're going to contribute to the world, and that is something unique about yourself. So how would you finish that sentence? Who wants to give that a try? That's deep. Yeah, I know. That's the job. The problem is if you start naming something, then you realize, well, the ultimate purpose that I would want to have for myself is that I become who I'm supposed to be, like achieve highness, a higher level of of who I'm supposed to be, a better person. Who are you supposed to be? That's my question. Right. That's my question. That's why I said writing the 30 things about yourself is starting to get aware of you and your unique qualities because they're not the same. Right. Take Rod, you, for example, you have a very interesting history. You're in a very unique situation, a unique place. I mean, everyone is. Everyone is. So, 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 if God puts you there, what would you think? And He gave you these qualities. What would you think that you have to bring out in the world? And now, I, I want to show you what happens. I, 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 I do this with people in, in a therapy session going through each of the mindsets. Whenever I've done this with people on a personal counseling session, after they identify what they think the mission is, all of a sudden, the gates start opening up on those things. You're going to see, if you put this in your forefront of your mind and in your prayers and in your consciousness, then God willing, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to start, your family's going to answer this, and, and, and whoa, it's happening. Because what we've done is we have moved from a, a life that is unconscious to a life that is conscious. That's the big difference. There, there are many benefits to, 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 to feel to prayer. Obviously, you know, the first and most important is your relationship with Hashem. The second is, is that you are lacking certain things, and by praying to Hashem, then you may be able to get those things. But there's a third benefit here, which is that when you pray for certain things, you actually become conscious of what you care about. It it takes the the because look, the 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 one of the greatest problems in life, one of the greatest problems is what's called hergel. Hergel means habit. Okay, habit means that I start doing something. And the Torah is replete with rebuke to people. Yermia, the prophet, Jeremiah rebuked the people. You're doing acts, anishik, anishik, mumad, the people are doing out of rote. It is very hard not to. I, I just gave a class, I see some people for that were from my earlier class today, on, on the month of El, on the new month of Elul. And we talked about the, the idea of the new month, Chodesh, a month is not a month, the word month in Hebrew is lechadesh, to renew. There needs to be a, a newness in your life, which is becomes very difficult when you're doing the same thing for 50 years. So a person, now, then what happens is, is that, okay, this is who I am. But the process that we're talking about is to be able, and that's what one of the things that feel is doing besides the Prayer, doing the, the 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 most important benefits of connecting to Hashem and recognizing your and, and asking to fill your lacks, but it's to even recognize what you care about. 
I don't know if you've had that experience, but I know I have. I'm like, you know, so I, all of a sudden I'm davening, I'm praying. And then I, and then as I, as I'm asking, I said, wow, I really care about that. And I wasn't even thinking about that or that person. But once I started, I started bringing it to the fore of my consciousness, then it became important. But when you don't, we are actually living life asleep. Okay. So David, that is a great motto. Put that in your consciousness now. Your purpose, that say that. Now, you're going to always in life, it's going to, as you as you grow, what happens is it becomes somewhat uh, uh, um, uh, 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 amended. And you get different situations. And maybe you'll do that and you'll say, whoa, I have, I have affected these people, my family, now I find the people in my city I could affect. That's good. Again, there's a few dangers of this. One danger is what we we'll call CEO syndrome. Every person's got to be solving every problem in the world. I don't know about that. I, I to 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 to. I they always tell you this quote with the famous rabbi who said, "I used to think I'd change the world. Then I got older. I said, I'll change my country." Then I got older, I said, I'll change my city. Then I got older, I said, I'll change my town. And then I got older, and I said, I'll change myself. So, so yeah, most people think in, in big terms, and, and that is a, a great illusion because, you know, very often the people who are influencing uh, um, other people in our society are people that do not know how to live their lives themselves. How, how do you have this phenomenon where the where, where basketball players who know how to put a ball into a hoop or someone knows how to act is telling me, you know, how to live my life? <laughs> what? 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 You don't know anything. You, I mean, like you really don't. It's not even like you're well educated. It's just like you know how to do a certain talent that is uh, is entertaining and 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 fairly minor. So like, keep your mouth shut and like be an entertainer. You know, uh, but 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 what happens is is that our society has shifted and says the idea is how I influence others. I'm a I'm a Facebook influencer. I influence. What, <laughs> but, but, but you have no because you have no you have no internal barometer of how to act. So you're trying to influence others. Well, well, Major, check out if you're acting correctly first. So we all get into the problem. We think of purpose. We want to go very grandiose. But David, that's very good. That's very good. Doing the seven mitzvahs properly and affecting the people in your orbit who are not accidental. They are specific there because you can affect them. Not only that, but every person you meet. As the sages, there's a great story. Uh, the story is not going to translate so much because it's a story. Uh, has, but 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 basically, we have a principle that that uh, um, that that any anything that you, I'll tell you the story. It's it's it's. Uh, it's a little hard to translate the story, but it, it was a story of a rabbi. His name is Rabbi Zusha, and 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 he was uh, he was going on the road, and and, and there was a uh, um, this there was a, a person there that his wagon fell over and the hay fell down. He said, "Hey, can you can, can you help me pick up the hay?" And he said, "I can't, I can't." And the guy says to him, "You can, you can, pick, you can, but you don't want to." So now, the the word "hey" in English, or, or even in Yiddish, was the word "hey" is also the Hebrew letter "hey." So it's a concept called raising up the letter "hey." So, so the rabbi got excited. He said, "Did you hear what this guy just told me?" He said to me, "I can raise the hey of God's name. I just don't want to." And he heard this whole this whole rebuke. In this this bum who was who was giving him who was telling us something totally different, but he heard a message that God was giving him, and therefore every person you run into is not an accident. You met a person. It you are to you meant to learn something. It says me uh, a person can learn from everyone, whether it's what to do or not to do. 
it's to influence or not to have influence. So, David, that's a good statement. You put that in your in the front part of your consciousness now that I'm doing that. I want to do my my purpose is I'm going to I'm going to fulfill the seven minutes that God asked me properly, and I'm going to affect other people around me in my immediate circles to be able to see that. Once you really start thinking about that, and you wake up and you make that as an adage to say this is a purpose, your life changes. Because now what you're doing is you are you are looking to fulfill a purpose and you will see that your ability to 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 go and to do the seven mitzvahs is going to be a whole new, a whole new level because this is what I'm about. God put me for a purpose. That's my purpose. I got to do it. Who else wants to give a crack at, at, at finishing that sentence of my purpose? We're not going to tie you to it you could change your mind it could be your rough first draft but it is an explosive way to start to think it changes the ball game because you're not just going by rote through life you are important there's something you got to do and i just want to give a try to finish that sentence my unique mission is to my purpose my unique purpose is to Anyone else want to give a try? I, I don't yes, really want to take a crack at that, but I did really. The, the first time I haven't ever heard that was in your book when I first started reading your book. And yeah. um, I had just never, you know, you hear about Mazel, but I had never, ever thought that it's the things that God gives you in order to accomplish the purpose, but still finding out that purpose is. Yeah. So, so because I think so, your purpose can change throughout your life because we're so some that, of us are in a unique situation where we've come from we've been in different lives. Yes, it's a great question. It's a great question. So there's different levels to this. And, and I write that in the book there. I get into a very deep concept of, of what is ultimately your purpose, which which is an ultimate sense that we it's very hard for us to know. So as you're developing in life, your your things will change. But what's going to happen most likely is you're going to see a common thread. Okay? So what's going to happen is most likely is you're going to start to see, let's say, I have in my book, I give the example of a person who has, let, let, me, let me say one other thing, which I, I, didn't, I didn't write in the book. But uh, uh, um, it's it's an important principle. There are different ways that a person's uh, um, uh, uh, different uh, um, uh, uh, rubrics, different different categories of personality types. Um, you know, I mean, they people make up these in, in psychology. They have all these different different things. My Meyer Briggs, I don't, but three that are in in terms of a deep thinking world that you might fit into one of these three. One is a person that is largely motivated by acts of kindness. Okay, that's usually a very e external person, and he's functioning through the mechanism of I love to give to others. Everyone has to give to others, but that is his. That is the person's under one of his one of the power zones of his trade. Another one where person is, and this is usually a person who's more introspective, not always, but a person who wants to do the right thing. They're very measured. That's that's called restraint, called guru. A person wants to do what's right, and 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 their quality is more measured. And you see different kinds of people. You even see it both for good and bad. Like you will see a person that is uh, um, out there very often, and and these people, let's say, they, who, who are are the potential kindness. A lot of times, their 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 fall, their challenge will be that they'll 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 overcross boundaries. Whether it's it's uh, taking things that are not theirs, whether it's 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 an appropriate sexual behavior. They might that that's the negative side of the external sort of person. The other person is, for example, a person who is more in still more about control and 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 doing things right. So sometimes that negative expression is a person who is a control freak. 
you'll see this in personalities, like in, in presidents of the United States. You have you have Bill Clinton and Richard Nixon. You know, so Bill Clinton was hey, he walked into the room, everyone loved him, blah, 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 and that was you know what his problem was. And 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 Richard Nixon, Bill didn't like him because he was more of a control person, and that, and that became part of his challenge. The third path is very often a more balanced path, which is based on on truth. I want to do what's right. And I, I'm I'm balanced in that way. So so every person has certain uh, um, personality tendencies, and they're very very uh, intricate. Those tools are what God gives you now. So what what Terry asked before is yeah, things will change over your life, but as you start to look into the deeper place of who you are in the root of your soul. That's what you're trying to find. That is going to be most likely a constant. It's just that you're not always going to see it. So you're going to see, you know, here I am today. But as you fi finish that, you'll find the next, the next vista, the next accomplishment. But you'll you'll see the thread that connects them because generally what we're trying to do and understand is is there's a place in us where we are unique. That's the key. That's the key. The Talmud says, very important line, which you don't hear all these people who are like, you know, these terrorist supporters saying, but it's a Torah statement, that one, the reason why God created humankind from one couple and not for many people as the animal kingdom was to teach you that if you save one life, you save the entire world. Because the whole world came from one person. You kill one person, you kill the whole world. Ah, uh, yeah. What about the war? Yeah, I understand that. And I, you know, and it's, it's terrible that uh, some people, that people die in wars. Uh, at the same time, there's, there's evil in the world that has to be fought. And, and people that that are, that 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 are supported by by you know people that support terrorism and and and, and that they put themselves as human shields. So unfortunately, war has as has, has uh, difficult repercussions. But the idea that the world comes from one person means that every person is an entire world. It, it's amazing. It really is amazing if you think about it. You know, I, I explained to you one time. The concept of, of humility. Because the Torah is given to the most humble person, which is not an accident. Right? Moses, it says, his greatest trait, he was the most humble person ever. That's what it says about Moses. He didn't say he was the smartest, he didn't say he was the fastest, so he's the most humble. That's not an accident that thereby the most humble person is given the Torah. He is the conduit to get the Torah. But I said to you before, what, how do you become humble? What does he do humble? Oh, I'm a nobody. How does Moshe walk around thinking he's a nobody when he has to wear a mask because light is exuding from his face? That's what it says in the, t in the text. He came down from Mount Sinai and his face was sh shooting out beams of light which Michelangelo mistranslated as horns, which that is the canard that Jews have horns. Yes, I once got that in college from, from a person who said, where's your horns? I once, I once did get that. Uh, but, the <laughs> but the reason why, the reason why he got it wrong was to says carne or, the word carrot means a beam of light or a of horns. They mistranslated it as, as they often do. So they think of horns. But Moshe has horns coming out. Horns. He's got light. He's got, <laughs> he's got beams of light coming out of his face. So they can't look at him. He can speak to Hashem with every once. How do you how do you how do you become humble when that's your situation? How are you humble? You 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 are the greatest. You know, you are the greatest. So there's two ways you become humble. I told you what before. There's two ways. The, the 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 deepest spiritual way, and this is the deeper correct way. The other one is also correct, but this is in the, is that you understand that yes, you are great, but how did you become great? 
We were created out of nothing. You didn't make yourself. I always say, I never understand people that are haughty about their beauty or their brains. Because you didn't do anything to get that. Maybe if you were haughty because you had great accomplishments, okay, maybe. But a truly honest person and a God-fearing person realizes that you didn't exist. I was an example. You know, I take something out of nothing and I create it. And then this, this, I make a little, uh, you know, uh, clay uh, formation. I breathe life. Into it. And then the formation comes back and says, oh, I'm a big shot. You weren't here a minute ago. You, you didn't exist. So the same thing. We don't have any existence. God created us. He gave us everything we have. He gave us the ability to do it. So the trick is where it becomes difficult is, is that when you did accomplish, you did do something, you did make something. So, so what happens is you say, oh, I did it. There becomes the wise man, the humble man who sees that, no, 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 no. God was assisting me. He was directing. Yeah, God considers that you did. You did your effort. But you know what? And I've told you this before. This is the craziest thing. This is the craziest thing. And I, 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 um, I always say this to people. And it really is. I write, I write in this chapter about, about, um, about uh, um, your unique mission. In life, you could try and try and try and make yourself and build yourself. And in the end, what you'll succeed in doing is building the person you always really were. What? That's like a, a downer. What do you mean? I made myself. No, no, no. It's not a downer. It's great. It means that the, the, there is an oak tree has a seed. And all the potential is there, but you got to put it in the ground. You got to water. You got to you got to bring it out. Your greatness is who you are. It is built into your root of your soul of who you are. And, and in life, what you're doing is you're making the right decisions. You are bringing out who you ultimately are. You're not making something that you weren't. God put that into the seed. Oh, you did you did the work. Yes, you did the work. God will you do the work to bring that out. But that's the work. The work is, is that is that you have a root of who you are. So, so you know, so the, so what we're saying here is, um, did uh, did we did we lose uh, Terry? No, Terry's here. That's so what Terry was saying before. Is that is that yes, there is the concept that you could change your mission changes or develops, but the reality is what you're going to find is there is a common thread. That common thread is you. And I'll tell you something really, really amazing. The thing is, is that you don't want to be anybody else. Your eternity is the flavor of the root of who you are. That's, that's the root of your essence. And that's you. And that's a crucial feeling. The feeling of knowing that I am me. It's the self-awareness that that is the, the, the concept of I have a, 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 an existence that is real. Now, where does that fit in into my connection into to God? That's exactly it. It has a place. It's a place. That's why you're happy. You have a you have a mission. You have a life force that has a special mission that comes at it. That's the expression. So who else wants to give a crack at saying Finishing the sentence. Don't feel nervous, but to finish the sentence and say, "My, I think, I think, my purpose right now, knowing my qualities, knowing where I am, knowing this, my purpose is in order to do X, Y, and Z. My unique mission, my unique, my unique job in this world is who wants to give it a try. We've had one so far. I'll try. Well, good. All right. So my unique mission would be to eradicate in myself what I hate in others. That's great. That's great. <laughs> so that so that really is that really. And I told you before, there are different personality. That's a guru statement. That's good. That's good. Guru is great. You know, it's easy to be nice when it doesn't cost you anything. When when all of a sudden you're in different situations in, in life, you start to see, oh, wait a minute, this bothers me. I get upset with that. What Tova is saying is very amazing. And I'll tell you this, this is 
this is you can already take it to the to the elections in America about what, what the media does. But there's a principle, there's a principle that says, call up Paisa Whoever sees the problem in the other and it bothers them, usually that problem is in themselves. And you have to look to where that where, why does it bug you so much? If if you are totally out of that problem, it, it wouldn't it, it'd be like a person, you know, when, when a person comes over to you and bothers you. So if, if the person is mentally incapacitated, mentally challenged, you don't get angry because you understand the person's in there. The person is unfortunate. So so if I see a person that's, I don't know, stingy, and it gets me mad, you know, why is it getting me so mad? Because maybe there's a part of me that's a little stingy. All right, good, Tova. So so say that in your in your concepts and work on that, but don't don't be surprised then because because you're taking a strong battle there. It should go it should go easily well. It should be mazel tov. It should be it should go in a way that gives you a a, a, a good ability to to uh, to handle it. I want us to all stop just going through life as habit and wrote and rather to know we have something we need to accomplish and you have something unique that you can accomplish and only you entertainment field hollywood is all to go and to put you in a trance it doesn't matter if your life is you're doing so meaningful just just keep yourself intoxicated on the, the 150 t- stations and what you're going to go eat and what you're going to watch. It's like unbelievable. Our world is constantly has all this stuff. They created this thing. And now nobody has to think, what the heck am I doing in life? The most important thing, you want to be happy? I'll tell you how to be happy. Do things that you know are meaningful purposeful and you have a purpose and you do act in that lines you will be happy you don't have to go and, and chase pursue happiness you have to pursue purpose once you pursue purpose and you live a meaningful life that's tied into who you really are you will automatically be happy